and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm making a really sweet smelling soap using this fragrance from Nature's Garden, Honey Bunny. <laughs> Isn't that a cute name? It smells so good and it's sweet. It definitely has that honey scent to it, but more. It's good. It does have a little vanillin in it, so it says it discolors to a tan. That's fine. I might use a little titanium dioxide in the uncolored portion just to keep it on the brighter side. Um, and for the swirl to represent my honey bunny. <laughs> I just named that. just tickles me. Anyway, I'm going to use my matte yellow oxide pigment here from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and this is a really pretty, uh, well, I don't want to say mustard because I'm thinking of honey, but it's not a bright yellow. It's just a really pretty, rich, buttery yellow, and I want that to represent my honey color. I'll do a swirl, and if this is behaving, I would like to do, I call it a twisty top. I don't know what else to call it, but similar to my sweet mint soap top that I missed the footage on, my camera cut out. I did it again on my frankincense and myrrh bars, but um, it's a really pretty top, and if everything's behaving, and my camera, <laughs> I'm gonna make sure my camera batteries are full. I would like to do a twisty top. So that's my goal in mind. We'll see when we get there if I can pull it off. But uh, all that being said, um, I'm gonna do goat milk and oil method for this soap, cause I love it. And I will also be adding some locally harvested raw unfiltered honey to this bar just to go with the honey bunny name i mean why not honey is great for your skin also and um, it makes a great soap additive you do have to be careful when you use honey i have found this to be true um, your soaps can heat up really good if there's honey in there so you just kind of watch it um, in my basement my studio is down here it's cool so i will put the wooden lid on my mold after it's in there and just come back every couple hours and check on it i probably won't put a blanket over the top like i normally do i'll just keep an eye on it um, i put sugar in most of my soaps in the lye water portion i dissolve cane sugar for some reason the honey sugars will heat the soap up more than the cane sugars not sure why that that is if you're a scientist and you know I'd love to hear why the honey is hotter than the sugar but because of the honey I won't put sugar in the lye solution it doesn't need a double dose <laughs> so all that being said let me get my hair pulled back and get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some honey bunny soap all right it's soap additives time for honey bunny <laughs> here is my goat milk that I have reduced this volume from the liquid that's mixed with the lye. So this is called milk in oil method. So it's going straight in the oils, milk and oil, get it? <laughs> I really like the milk and oil method. I feel like I get enough milk in there to get all the creamy, wonderful benefits, and it's a little easier prep work, so I'm really enjoying milk and oil. Here is a couple of tablespoons. This is just shy of two tablespoons of locally harvested raw organic honey, wonderful wild honey is what it is. Um, and I'm just putting it right in the oils here and gonna get it all blended up in there along with my additives. Let me just get that blended because I wanna make sure the honey is all blended in there. All right, so I wanted to make sure my honey was blended because honey is not oil soluble, it's water soluble. So as I add the lye solution, it will go ahead and just dissolve and dissipate in there, but I wanted to make sure it was broken up and blended really well. So let's add the dry ingredients. We're going full on creamy. I'm gonna add my heavy cream powder, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of kale and clay and two tablespoons of colloidal oats. And we'll get those all blended in and ready to go. And then we will make some soap. And I should mention the fragrance is already in here. It got very good reviews that it didn't cause acceleration or problems. And when I feel, I've not soaked with this before, but the reviews made me feel confident to do that. I like to go ahead and add it in there so I don't have to think about it. I have on occasion forgotten to add my fragrant oil and that's always a bugger when that happens. So it's in here. Let me get this blended up and then we'll get to making soap. It's time to get moving forward. And what I've got going on in here is distilled water that has some cane sugar in, dissolved in it. And I did forget and put cane sugar in there even though there's honey in here. So I'm gonna have to watch this like a hawk. I was not paying attention and I was making a bunch of lye pots for soap. And so there is sugar in here, but we're gonna 
just watch it and move forward. Proceed carefully. So there's sugar, there's tussa silk fibers, there's sodium lactate, and of course there's lye. So that's what's going on in here. Yeah, it was <laughs> after I got all of my prep work done, I stopped and just did a face plant. I'm like, oh, I put sugar in there. But I think we're gonna be okay, and hey, as long as this doesn't overheat, this bar is gonna lather like a dream, right? So I think it's gonna be fine. Thinking positive here. So again, the fragrance is in here, so I'm just gonna get it up to a nice emulsion and we'll get the color split and just go from there. See how everything's behaving, but let me tell you, this smells so nice. It's sweet, but it's not a cloying sweetness. It's, it's just really, it's a good fragrance. If this behaves well, I will definitely be revisiting this one. It's the next day and I am very happy to report I had no overheating issues. I'm so thankful. Um, I did have the wooden lid on this, but I did not put a blanket over it and I just came and peeked at it every couple of hours. No overheating. It did go through gel phase. Smells fantastic. Isn't that cute? So uh, yeah, this is going to lather up like a dream. So let's get it out of here and see how the inside swirls came out. I thought it was very interesting also, the uncolored portion, um, because of all the sugars it started, uh, if you saw when I was pouring it, it turned sort of a pinkish beige color, not very attractive, but that was just the heat from the sugars and the lye and the goat milks and everything. So it's definitely not that color today. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> so let's get in here and see what we've got going on the inside.
I'm back with the lovely Olga and I am anxious to get in here and see how the inside of these came out. I'm loving the color. Um, it will lighten up a little bit from what we're seeing here. It's kind of a dark color, but it's still kind of doing its soapy thing. So, let's get in here. Oh, I'm loving it. Oh, pretty, pretty. Those are beautiful and muted. Smell fantastic. And again, with the honey and the sugar, these are gonna lather really, really nice. I'm pretty sure of it. So, oh, that's pretty. And this fragrance, even with all those sugars and the goat's milk, so that was a lot of sugar going on. It did not accelerate trace. Uh, it was very workable, lots of time smells great so i will be revisiting this fragrance from nature's garden i'm so delighted with it